Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the National Training Agency's online session on entrepreneurship in TVET. I am Ms. Omita Jagannath, Customer Service Officer at the Business Development and Communication Department of the National Training Agency. I am your moderator again for this session, and today's topic is skills and programs in entrepreneurship in TVET. Our guest for today holds over 40 years experience in education and training. He has served as general manager for the training division at MIC IT for seven years, and he currently holds the position of technical advisor for training division at MIC. Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome Mr. Reynold John for our dis discussion this morning. Thank you. Welcome, Mr. John. Without further ado, welcome. Good morning and welcome, and thank you for your kind welcome. And uh, good morning, Trinidad and Tobago, all our listeners. We're so happy to have you here. And I mean, I really appreciate that you've made the time to have this very important and interesting discussion today where we're talking about entrepreneurship in Tibet. And the way we've structured our questions today, we want to hear a lot about what your experience is and what you have to say. So before we begin, can you give us a little insight as to about yourself? Tell us a little bit about yourself, your background. Mm. Yes, my background is a little scary, but <laughs> also, but very also very interesting. Mm -hmm. And I say a little scary because I'm one of 10 kids from Tobago and um, coming from a very poor family. I think I recall sleeping on the floor, on the ground, um, mm -hmm. in the house until I was perhaps around 13 or 14 years. So I would have gone to school barefooted and stuff like that. And then, um, so that's my, my childhood days. I mm -hmm. would have had one chance at common entrance because I was born later down in the year in December, actually, at the end of December, mm -hmm. and I feel that chance. So you could imagine my father now, who was just a watchman and uh, a homeboy doing his own gardening, trying to fund about four of us through secondary school because every, nobody passed common entrance at that time. And so we would off to the estate to cut coconuts to support ourselves uh, mm -hmm. over the weekend through secondary school. And while at secondary school, I, I met a friend who we were also friends at primary school. So we ended up in the same secondary school. And uh, he said, uh, what are you going to do after you finish secondary school? I am certainly not going to sit in an office and tear up papers or write something over and say good morning to some angry person. So what are we going to do? And we said, let's get into TVET. What is TVET? And so, well, let's go to technical school. So what do you want to do at technical school? And we weren't sure. But a long story short, I applied, he applied, and I got through, and he didn't. <laughs> but the other thing is inquiry that got me into TVET. Uh, there, we had a box about 38 centimeters by 25 centimeters. That's about 14 by 10 inches for those who are in the imperial unit system. <laughs> and, I heard, heard Dave Alcock, who was one of those radio hosts. Yes, they are 6 10 a.m. <laughs> and I wondered how on earth a fella the size of Dave Alcock could get into the small box that is my radio. <laughs> radio. So I went and I looked in the back, and all I saw was lights. Those were lights from the vacuum tubes that were the kind of electronic thing of the day. Uh, we have moved on to microprocessors now, and that's how rapid it has changed. And then uh, I didn't see him, so I wanted to find out. I determined that I must find out how on earth Dave Elcock got into the small box to do this um, radio hosting on mornings. And that began my inquiry and where I went into technical vocational education. And so I was successful at San Fernando Tech in the electrical electronics department. And on return, I saw a job opening for teachers. Mm -hmm. And I
We seem to be having a little bit of technical issues, so let us um, pause for a second there. Um, I'm just going to recap what you said, Mr. John. I really, I know that you're giving us a little summary of what your story is, and uh, it must be very detailed. I mean, one day you should probably write a biography about it, because it, I am very interested. Just those two little minutes you shared with me. I'm so interested in hearing what you have to say. And I like the idea that you said you were looking at this little box, which was the radio, and your curiosity got the better of you, where you wanted to find out more about this little device and how to, you know, how it works and all of that. Um, you mentioned something just now, and maybe that's a good way for us to start off the discussion on TVET. When you heard about this TVET thing, and you said, what is this TVET? What was the kind of response you got at that time? Well, how was TVET explained to you? Well, it's, 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 it, it was explained, it, you, don't, you don't get very far. It's a place for if you weren't successful in academics, you get into TV. Okay. Uh, if you, in Tobago language, if you can't learn book, learn a trade. That is essentially what was explained to me. Now, but the we, know, inquiry, we know that um, that is a particular um, stigma that has been there from inception and uh, i can tell from the passion in your voice and i mean you've been involved in tibet in over 40 years that really and truly that is not the case so can you tell us in your own words exactly what does tibet mean first of all what does the acronym mean and what does tibet itself mean to you well the acronym is technical vocation education and training Mm -hmm. And I particularly like the word education and training. Mm -hmm. That seems to be a nice cohesion between education, what we call education or ac academic, and technical skills. And for that, I would want to endorse the fact that TVET, or Technical Vocational Education and Training, is, a, is the engine room, I would say, of the economy of a country is what drives the country. Uh, those people who plan and execute things, fix things, repair things, get things going, right? Mm -hmm. Investigate, right? And those are the things that make Tibet what it is. And uh, for us as educators and people in this field, our responsibility is to take young person to that person, sorry, to that environment where they can see that this technical vocational education and training is a viable, extremely important tool for moving forward and for getting into entrepreneurship and for getting into a good job and sustainable job. So rather than saying that TVET or trade is just for those who are not academically inclined, what you were saying is that TVET can be offered as an opportunity for all persons. Um, so then if it is that we have persons that are going through secondary school or that are going to school, how, how do you, what is your insight into what school provides, what sort of opportunities schools itself provides for individual? Um, very good question. Um, initially, and I say initially because things have morphed or changed over the years, schools were intended, are still intended to give you a broad-based education mm -hmm. to allow speak to you, to allow me to communicate with you, to allow me to check my salary, to <laughs> allow me to, to do things that the human being does, the culture, to learn stuff about, you know, about myself, about how I'm built, about my own emotions and stuff like that, and a bit of mathematics, general education, to place yeah. me on a platform that I can take off. I can take off into technical education, I can take off into academic education. And both are, for me, should tell you that they have priority of esteem. Very valuable. I can see that, you know, I know that this is something we had discussed already when we were trying to plan this session. So I wanted to make sure that we captured the fact that anybody can get into TVET, anybody right. at all. So if it is we're looking at, let's look at Trinidad and Tobago in the first instance. What sorts of opportunities are there available in the TVET environment then? What, what, what are your thoughts on that? There are, there are loads of opportunities. 
loads of opportunities. At, at secondary school, you have an idea of what's going on because mm -hmm. I, the NTA was responsible for running these CBQ programs at school. Mm -hmm. And that is an international practice where technical vocational um, education is engaged with uh, traditional secondary education to give one a feel mm -hmm. of what's out there and the opportunities. So having graduated from secondary school, one could expect that you could get into medicine, you could get into TVET, you could get into anything that you want to. And there are loads of opportunities. Um, the, the NTA, of course, has a website, and they can find lots of information there. Secondly, then you have institutions like MIC, Institute of Technology. They have information online. You have the National Energy Skills Center. They have loads of, um, and all these institutions, and uh, let me put a plug in. MIC is an accredited institution by the Accreditation Council of Trinidad and Tobago. Right, it's exactly. also an approved center by this, because of the other program, is an approved center by the NTA. Mm -hmm. So is the NESC. The NESC is an approved center by the, N um, the, N by the NTA, sorry, and mm -hmm. also an accredited institution. And so there are these accredited institutions that mm -hmm. allows you to build a portfolio of skills and knowledge that can take you from the level one up to level five mm -hmm. on the qualification framework. Right. Now, as you've made reference to our website, our NTA website, ladies and gentlemen, you can find all of the information that Mr. John is speaking about at www.ntatt.org, where you can find a list of all of our approved training providers. Um, I heard you mention, of course, yes, you are representing MICIT. I heard you mention that, yes, they have programs. So if it is somebody is interested in getting into a program, can you give us a little idea of how they can go about doing this? What is the advice you have for them getting into these programs? Okay. So you can come. You, you, you do not have to know which program you want to do. Mm -hmm. The NTA have a website, and unfortunately, I do not have the, the, the website available. Right now. That's okay. But um, they have a website, and they also have advertisements. So mm -hmm. at the intake time, which is normally around September, October, about mm -hmm. two or three months before that, there will be advertisements on the all different type of media about the programs that are available. And you can do your application online based on the programs and or, or you can call in and ask somebody about the structure of a program if you think you can't understand it from an online session and you'll be able to access those programs so that they will be assisted in getting into these programs there's no need to be afraid there right. will be assistance provided for business to get into this so when we're looking at tvet now we spoke about opportunities that are available locally are there opportunities that exist internationally for TVET? Oh. If I'm somebody who doesn't know, tell me. Tell me what are your thoughts on that. I know you have a lot to say. Well, um, there are all our institutions and those TVET institutions that I've mentioned, especially mm -hmm. IC and NESC, would have okay. international connections. And that means that we have programs that are either accredited by the Canadians or by the Germans and the English. And therefore, there are opportunities to move from your local level of, of certification to a higher level in Trinidad and Tobago. Firstly, you can move through those levels right here. You can matriculate to higher levels. And we are in discussions with um, UTT and the University of the West Indies for persons who uh, have done technical vocational programs at our institution to move to those institutions to matriculate, matriculate quite easily. So there are those opportunities. And there are also opportunities for them to move to Germany, because we have one or two students who are already studying in Germany who would have completed solar programs here and got into universities in Germany. And we have um, trainees who would have gone to England using our qualification and move on to higher education and or find a job in these places. So a job is advertised in England. And let me give you one example. The London Eye, that's that thing that spins around. 
Mm -hmm. The manager of that place, the person who is in charge of the technical, is a graduate from MIC. He applied wow. online. He applied online with his master craftsman qualification. He did his interview and he now works on that. So there are loads of opportunities internationally and also in Trinidad and Tobago. And as you mentioned about the jobs, right? I know outside there, persons are saying it's so very difficult, especially because of the pandemic and even prior to that, to get a job. Tell me about your outlook about the current jobs outside there right now as it relates to TVETs. What are your thoughts on that? Well, the, the outlook is still great. Mm -hmm. it, um, it is still great because fortunately, Trinidad and Tobago sits uh, very high on the TVET forum in terms of qualified people. And mm -hmm. there's always a yearning for people from Trinidad and Tobago. And I'm saying that because I held a position of vice president of IVTA, which was an international technical vocational education system. And they would post these jobs that are available online. I held that position for about four years. It's originated out of the United States. And therefore, people, persons coming from Trinidad and Tobago could access these opportunities. There are loads of opportunities. And if you, especially in TVET, start looking in at your robotics and automation and so on, programs that you are available right now at MIC and to some extent at NESC, you can move on uh, to those jobs that are available out there. As a matter of fact, we have about three or four persons I know from MIC who were given job offers um, internationally and uh, they await the, 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 slow, the opening of the borders so that they can pick up these appointments. Mm. Wow, sounds like you know, this is something that is very good for business to get involved in. Specifically, today's session is geared towards giving some advice to persons who want to become and well, who are entrepreneurs in Tibet. What advice would you have for business who wants to become their their own their own I don't know business owner somebody who wants to be an entrepreneur in this particular technical and vocational field? Uh, very good question. My father used to say that the worst vice is advice, uh, but um, and that is just a joke. But uh, I would like to give some good counsel this morning. Uh, at at uh, age around thirty two. I was complete. I completed building my home in Tobago. Wow! Um, upstairs and downstairs. Now I'm not showing off here, but I'm saying that because I opened a small company because of my TVET qualification in electrical contracting, mm -hmm. and with the money I was able to use to build my home without going to the bank. So having had my qualification, I opened a small company while teaching and still had about four or five employees mm -hmm. and only on weekends mm -hmm. so on weekends we have our truck our ladders our tools and off we go and sometimes we complete one installation depends on the type in one day mm -hmm. so that there are loads of opportunities for young people to join together to work as teams once you would have had your qualification and there are loads of opportunities. Yesterday, I saw an ad somewhere, two or three guys, uh, plumbers, they joined together. i sorry, I should have taken the information. And they have advertised now, the small business, that they will come into your home. They will have their badges. You are aware of the crime situation in Trinidad and Tobago. They have their ID badges. They have their ID swinging on them. And once you have a problem, you can contact them. So there are loads of opportunity once you are aptly qualified in the technical field for entrepreneurship. Okay, so let's recap what we've discussed here so far because you've given us so much information and I want to make sure we don't lose anything. You're mm -hmm. saying that this, this formal school education provides a platform for you so you can develop as an individual. You're saying right. that you, an individual who wishes to get involved in TVED, there are options locally and abroad. You're saying that persons can apply to programs, ensure that they are accredited, mm -hmm. right? There's yeah. some exploration before. You're saying that after they qualify, they can look for jobs either locally or abroad, right? And you're saying that you can push even further. 
if it is that you are already qualified, you're certified, you can actually become a business owner and entrepreneur. And it seems to be a sort of a step-by-step -step formula. Yes. I know it may not be the same path for everyone, but it seems to be something that is uh, a good way to, to get off the ground. Right? right. And again, we have you as a live example that it works. Of course. <laughs> so as we are on that, before I head across to the questions, you shared some information with us yesterday. You shared some photos and videos with us. And I think um, I'm going to ask our, our technician to load up a success story. And maybe you can tell us a little bit about this individual as we wait for it to load up. This is, this is one of the success stories of persons who were able to get involved in TVET. So let's see that video there. Tell us about this person. Okay, that's Mr. Sean Solomon. He came to the our level one program. He would have been through secondary school. I think he has about he had at the time about three or four O level subjects, but he said he interested in electrical. So he started in one of our elect level one program. And uh, what you see in here, this picture you see in here, that mm -hmm. is his work. He developed mm -hmm this mechatronics lab single-handedly from scratch. So to say that he came in at level one, he did one of, a few programs at MIC, got a scholarship, went to Germany, did electrical and electronics engineering, then got another scholarship and went back to Germany and did mechatronics. On your right of the picture, that was his examination piece. Now, wow. that is the introduction into uh, automation. So this little device can stack pieces of me metal, plastic, whatever, discriminate among them, meaning telling the difference whether they are metal or plastic by color, move them to a particular place and drop them in a particular bucket based on the, what parameters he would have set. That is his examination piece. A little more than that, the entire structure from the physical, the in, the, from the part that it's built on, mm -hmm. he had to machine and build it in a machine shop. Mm -hmm. so I everything about this thing was machine and built. The only thing he did not build are the actual components themselves, but all the arms and what have you, it was basically a pneumatic kind of operation right with um, different kind of pneumatic motors and, and levers and what have you and switches but that's basically his test piece you know mm -hmm. he is a success story he's one of our senior instructors but he's also a senior coordinator because he did some management programs as well and he's in charge of our advanced center at mic institute of technology wow. and beyond that i know you wanted to know this he uh -huh. has an electrical company he set up his own company. So these are basically, so you can write PLCs, programmable logic controllers. You can write a program and have a machine behave as how you want it to behave. This entire shop, including the hard electrical supply, everything from panel, everything was done by him. Yeah. Yeah. Took about Is a year. Local? Pardon? Is this local? Very local. You can see that right at MIC Institute of Technology. And he, has <laughs> a little, he has a little workshop at home where you will see some of the same components um, that he would have purchased and building himself so that he is an entrepreneur. And I wanted to share that experience. But beyond that, I wanted to show the experience that he came in and did the first level program went to at least a level four program and he's now able to do his own business wow. opportunities that are out there for all our young people every one of them to be successful in tvet it's an exciting environment well mr john you are certainly an inspiration to all of us as is this person mr sean solomon i i i mean if I were you, the audience looking at this, I would review this entire session again, um, just to make sure that I got the gist of everything because it makes, Mr. John makes it sound so easy, but I know the climb must have been difficult. 
and you all just persevered and got through. Thank you so much for sharing that particular image with us, those videos with us, and that particular story. Um, I'm going to head across to our live chat questions. So let's see what sorts of questions we have from our audience, Mr. John. Yeah, sure. We have one here. How are these programs facilitating entrepreneurship in Trinidad and Tobago? Um, one, two, in, in more than one way, it gives you, first of all, the base skill. Right? You must have that skill set. And secondly, um, the institution, I think for most institutions now, there is a program on entrepreneurship. So while you are doing your technical program, you, one of the core programs is entrepreneurship. So it prepares you while you're actually doing it. It gives you idea, ideas about how you're going to set up and have build your business. Your, yeah. Okay, okay. So aside from a technical know-how, you're getting some insight into the business know-how. Of course, great. Right. Let's see. Um, we have another question. Can you tell us a bit about TVET and National Workforce Development? Can I about TVET and National Workforce Development? Um, and I would want to put a plug in here for the NTA. The mm -hmm. NTA is that body and that institution that captures all this information. And um, working with the NTA over the years, I know that they have been uh, establishing a sort of registry, if, it, if, if, if I'm not mistaken, for a person with various skills. And that is tied in with, of course, the Ministry of Labor. And that is tied in with the OJT program. So the whole construct of, um, of the national workforce is set in that notion of the NTA's role about managing that whole TVET environment to see what skills are being done by which institution and establishing a registry. And, that, and by the way, most of our technical institutions like the MIC and the NASC build their curriculum from inquiries into what's going on nationally, what's driving our economy. So they will build their curriculum from both a supply and a demand side. Case in point, the government speak about street lamps that are going solar. So the institution begins a program in solar, right? so that it is prepared, that's from the supply side. You look at an industry and they say they need X amount of technicians in this field, the institution builds, so that's from the demand side. And so these curricula are built with that in mind, that infrastructure is built with providing a workforce that will drive the economy of Trinidad and Tobago. And the NTA captures that information. Definitely. We also believe that TVET is so essential and it's not just when things are at, you know, at a dire circumstance that we should look out for TVET as an opportunity. Uh, we have someone here asking on behalf of Tobago, can you confirm if MIC offers CVQ level one programs in Tobago, especially for persons who are unable to formally obtain it from secondary schools? Yes, they do. Sorry, yes, yes, MIC does um, offer those programs in Tobago. Um, just take a trip down to the center. It is in, within walking distance of everybody <laughs> from Tobago. <laughs> Having walked to school for most take of Take a trip down right? to the center, I like that. Yes, <laughs> just drop in and just inquire. There are loads of level one programs that are available. And for different level of learners, when, when I say level, I mean also different ages. There are CVQ level one programs for people just out of school. There are CVQ level one programs for persons who would have left school a long time and are working and want to get their, 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 their skills up and the latest skills available. The Tobago House of Assembly at MIC runs some construction programs at level one. So there are loads of programs that are available throughout Trinidad and Tobago. But specific to this question, there are loads of programs at MIC in Tobago at the moment. 
Wonderful. Good to know. Um, um, while I'm waiting for additional questions to come in, we have a comment, and it's actually a compliment to you, Mr. John. It seems okay. that a, a former student of yours has indicated that teacher John, he was a cool and pleasant teacher in my days at school. Physically, he looks the same. The years have been kind to you. Great story you are sharing here. So yeah. we have at least one viewer. <laughs> okay, thank you very kindly. Yeah, thank you, thank you very, very, very much. Um, I forgot good. our technician. I forgot our technician's name, who is on, Nari. Um, with you. Pardon? Nari, our technician? Yeah, Nari. Our we were, Nari and, yeah, Nari and I were just chatting. Uh -huh. And we were chatting about um, the outer space thing. He's a Martian. And um, <laughs> I think you, you would have posed the question. And uh -huh. I, I want to address this. Is um, mm -hmm. For the modern day, how is Tibet addressing what's happening? And mm -hmm. I think that mentioned uh, that one could stay in on Earth and control mm -hmm. the <laughs> of man. and therefore one can stay in Trinidad and Tobago or in Tobago and mm -hmm. fix a piece of equipment in Trinidad. And mm -hmm. so technical vocational education is moving with the times, is moving in time with the online thing. Mm -hmm. I knew about online as a little boy because I did a correspondence course with the NTS as a little boy but i also knew that my father was a fisherman and anything mm -hmm. that was online was good food yeah online meaning the physical line that you threw for fishing <laughs> <laughs> very good yeah this is a different type yes. of online but i'm glad that you're <laughs> sh sharing the experience that you know because especially because of the pandemic we became a little more uh, well, I want to say comfortable, but we were all forced to now look at new ways to do the same things we would have done. And um, many persons that we've interviewed in this particular channel have indicated that there were opportunities that arose because of having to look at doing things in a new way. Um, yeah. I believe you were also mentioning that uh, MIC was looking into offering the uh, training in uh, not just online, but in perhaps a blended sort of... Uh, yeah. Uh, opportunity yes. so that they can incorporate both the live and the online session Precise. right so right so you know what mr john i think that you've given us quite a lot of food for thought today we don't seem to have any more questions coming in on the chat but is there anything that probably you wanted to add to what we've had, we've already discussed this morning um just to give some sort of vim or drive to our, to our uh, viewers and listeners mm -hmm. in that you are onto a good thing with Tibet. Mm -hmm. You are onto a good thing. And may I start this little minute or two with a rhetorical question. What's the difference between uh, somebody who has done Tibet, a technician, a skilled person? What's the difference between the guy who fixes your car and a surgeon or a pilot. We consider these academic top positions. But you go to the doctor, you tell him a few things, he makes a diagnosis and he cuts you open and he fixes it. <laughs> you go to the technician, you tell him a few things, or he sees a few things, makes some diagnosis, opens it and repairs it. And I say no more in that it is not at all degrading to find yourself in a job uh, that is TVET oriented. It is not at all degrading. As a matter of fact, my life is built around TVET and there are several persons like me in Trinidad and Tobago and worldwide who have built careers on technical vocational education and training. And training. It is the hub, it is what drives the economy. It gets a little more complicated. That means that all of us would have to surrender ourselves to having a good foundation because TVET are not for dummies. TVET, technical vocational, is alternative, another path, just as somebody will go into medicine, you go into TVET, whether it's carpentry, masonry, plumbing, 
and you find a good life, satisfaction in what you do. That is a very, very, very nice way for us to end this morning's session, giving us an excellent food for thought, Mr. John. Thank you so very, very, very much for, for taking the time to share this insight with me. And uh, I know that we may be having some persons that are, are addressing other questions, asking other questions. So we'll see if we can answer those after the session is over, because I know we have to let you go. Ladies and gentlemen, with this question, with this response, with this particular ending there, we've come to the end of our online session this morning. And on behalf of the NTA, Mr. John, I want to give you a heartfelt thanks for taking the time this morning to sit with us, to share your insight, to share your story, and to give us the encouragement to get involved in TVET. Thank you so much. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you once again for being here, for joining us this morning. We hope you've liked and subscribed to this particular channel as we continue to support the NTA and all of its initiatives. Remember to wear your masks and stay safe. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you. Have a good day, too.